Hello, I am Hannah Mobley and I'm going to be talking a little bit about my inspiration and influences for you guys. So here's a little bit of an overview of what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to be talking about three main things. So my concepts, style and mediums, and techniques that I um, tend to use and am influenced by. So, um, yep, here's a little sneak peek and I will delve deeper into those things in just a couple seconds. <laughs> so, going on to my concepts, kind of the themes surrounding uh, my work and inspiring it. So the first one is nature. Um, I've always been inspired by nature. It's always has a, it's always had a presence in my work. Uh, mostly the naturalistic imagery like plants and landscapes and um, naturalistic scenes and all of that. Um, just the intricacies and the compositions of the natural world have always fascinated me with its colors and its details and the compositions and just um, just gleaning from that beautiful just natural world that we have just right at our fingertips. So uh, I grew up in the church and I still um, I still go to church so um, it has a big presence in my life and growing up I always loved hearing about our natural world referred to as creation like it's one giant complex amazingly detailed artwork by God because that's what a creation is like you you make it and it's a part of you and it's just this really awesome thing to see that um, and to believe that our world was created by God um, so that spirituality of nature that aspect of nature um, inspires me to put that same meaning and feeling in my own creations, my own artwork, and that is a driving force for me. So I'm going to be talking about a few in artist inspirations and then showing my own artwork throughout my presentation. So here's some uh, um, artists that I'm inspired by that are in the concept of nature. So the first one is Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, I really love her shifts in color and value when she's blending. And also something that I really noticed about her work is that she uses a lot of color blocking. So each section in her artwork is aiding to the bigger picture overall. So if you zoom in to any section of her paintings, it's going to be blocked in just these different colors blended together. And so when you step away from it, you get that experience of, um, of that plant or that flower as a whole. So I've tackled that technique with this close-up plant painting style in my own artwork that I will show you guys in a minute. Uh, the second artist inspiration for nature that I have is Monet. I've always loved the impressionistic renderings of the outdoor world, especially in his work, um, just with these visible brush strokes with this energy, but also them being just loose. So having like a loose style with painting kind of brings that peaceful, um, serene experience for the viewer and just kind of imagining yourself in that environment that he has created. So um, I really love his use of that and also multiple shades and tints of the same hue. So I've taken that um, into account to use in my own work as well. So this one on the left, um, I have seen multiple times at the St. Louis Art Museum. And so that experience of just being engulfed in this giant painting is just a really amazing experience. So I highly recommend you go visit that at the SLAM if you have not already. So here are some of my art. 
so this is taken from uh, my human nature series that I completed last year. Um, so you can see that this photo reference kind of contains a lot of what I have um, rendered here on my own painting. This um, came from my family's garden last year. Uh, and that was kind of the inspiration for that whole series was this kind of garden theme connecting to that uh, personal connection um, of us as humans. And next, here is a picture of me at Sequoia National Park sitting by this ginormous tree. And I decided to paint it the year after I went. And I really love this piece because um, it kind of sparked my love for this proportion of canvas. So this panoramic, stretched out um, perspective that, um, that I think is really unique, but also it just really fits with this subject matter that I decided to paint it on as well. Um, this is just a fun little painting I did um, just kind of inspired by the flowering trees of spring. And this last one, um, kind of a, um, a rendering of uh, my time in Florida uh, over spring break um, and seeing how something so tiny and detailed and delicate can come out of something um, so giant and sometimes unforgiving as the ocean. So my next concept is my faith. So I just picked out a couple of verses from Genesis um, talking about God's creation of the world and also us as humans. So um, I'm going to read this bolded verse for you guys. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So I love this emphasis on creator God. And this verse it says that we were created in the image of God. So if God himself is a creator, then we also are creators. So as an artist, I find this really inspiring, taking this um, concept from what I believe in about my faith, but also being able to relay that to my own identity as an artist. So some artist inspiration with faith. Um, this artist is an illustrator of a children's Bible that, I, uh, that me and my siblings grew up with. And I was always mesmerized by his illustrations and his um, his artwork interacting with the story of the Bible. So I super highly recommend you flipping through this at some point, um, just from an art perspective. His use of color and line um, are really prominent in this, just showing a lot of rhythm and movement and um, some really interesting perspectives. Um, I think the style of these figures are kind of rem reminiscent of Egyptian figures from ancient art with their long faces and noses. And I think this is really cool because it kind of ties um, the art back to that, um, to that area of the world, um, the Middle East and around there where these stories originated from. Uh, and then just working closely with that narrative is really important to me of why this artwork is so successful because it's, it really um, is very closely knit with all of the stories in this, um, in this Bible and um, it just is really, really striking to me. So some of my artwork uh, this is inspired by a hymn, and I sketched it out a couple years ago, and then afterwards um, decided to um, make it into a lino-cut print, and I did that this past year, and 
this is just um, inspired by the hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. So taking this um, line in the song and putting a visualization to it. So here is our, uh, our humanity. Uh, so something that has also really fascinated me is just what makes us up as humans. So these relationships, the social nature, um, psych psychological makeup, and all the experiences that make us up um, just who we are. So this interest for me, I think, is taken from all the psychology and humanities classes that I've had in the past just observing how different people function and analyzing myself. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I've always enjoyed um, the why behind things and those deeper conversations and critical thinking to dig deeper into things. Uh, I'm a big thinker, so that really feeds into what kind of artwork I want to make and just having that meaning and concept behind my work um, is having just a really... Uh, big presence. Um, my Myers-Briggs is an ISTJ-A, if you know what that means. So if you can interpret that, translate that, then hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> so here's some artist inspiration. I'm mostly taking inspiration from the surrealists with this concept of humanity. So I was first ex uh, exposed to Salvador Dali in high school. My uh, art teacher showed us this short film called Destino, and it's a collaboration project between Walt Disney and Salvador Dali. So Salvador Dali kind of being the, the weird eccentric creative one, <laughs> and then Walt Disney um, kind of translating that to an animation. Um, and they never actually saw the finished project. It was released in 2003 um, by Roy Disney, even though um, it was the project was um, started in 1946. So it's really a mesmerizing animation, just music in the background, but the images morphing into each other. Um, and it's so dolly. Like if you haven't seen it, like totally look it up. I have a link right there, but um, I don't think I'm gonna show it in this presentation. And so this uh, second piece of artwork I have here has a really, really long name, <laughs> but I love it because um, just this visualization of time in a dream is just fascinating how Dolly was able to visually show this in a painting because the passage of time in a dream is kind of just pushes all together and you can't really tell what's going on when you're actually in the dream. And then just the emphasis through the title, uh, I think is also um, really awesome to kind of show us what to look for and being able to kind of take it all in. And the second one is Rene Magritte. I also really love him as a surrealist artist, um, especially the um, Treachery of Images painting I have right here. I actually have this on a t-shirt because I love it so much. <laughs> uh, just the idea of images versus reality. So using that part of your brain that realizes that disconnect between that reality that you're experiencing and then images and thoughts and abstract things in contrast to that. So this is really kind of bringing this out in this painting um, in a very forthright way. <laughs> uh, and the second one um, on the right here is just that flat versus the depth, which also shows up in a lot of surrealist work. Um, and it's really cool because it uses your brain with optical illusions and in the actual concept of it. This one is a contemporary artist named Amanda Grieve. I first saw her solo show at Olivet 
in 2018 at the Victorian House Art Gallery. And they're just beautifully realistic oil paintings that aren't super big, but are just very striking with the depiction of flowers and the figures and just, um, just that rawness and accuracy to depict humanity. And um, the contrast of the flowers and the concept of humanity kind of inspired my own work last year as well. And this uh, imagery of duct tape in this painting on the right is actually not duct tape, it's actually painted. So <clears throat> I think that's really impressive, but also I think it comments on just the quick fixes and um, fragility of um, your emotions sometimes, which I think is pretty genius. So uh, the next big thing I'll talk about is style and mediums. So I've always loved mixed media and painting because just the material aspect of it. Um, I grew up with craft and DIY projects, mostly seeing like my mom scrapbooking, those kid art projects that you do when you're young and that process still sticking with me. Um, my dad likes building things like um, furniture, construction, stuff like that. And I've always been a very tactile person. So I think my use of mixed media really makes sense for me. Um, and then growing up, just seeing the versatility of painting um, and what you can do on 2D and 3D surfaces is really awesome. And just that aspect of kind of accessibility and just wanting to just touch it <laughs> if it's coming off the canvas is just, oh, I love it. So here's some artist inspiration. I found this artist uh, named Florian Nicole um, last year, and I think his work is just really awesome with the overlay of materials that he uses and just the mere suggestions with line and the blotches of color kind of lets your brain fill in um, with that negative space and just, um, yeah, his use of mixed media versus digital and that overlay is also really cool as um, him being a contemporary artist. The next one um, I'm sure you have all seen before and have several interactions with is the illustrator Eric Carl. Um, he's just a beloved, just nostalgic illustrator with his work you know, spanning over decades. And I'm just still to this day so intrigued by the use of color and texture. And I love his collaging style and all of the narratives that he uses. So here's a few of my art pieces. Um, so just these um, mixed media works using different processes in one piece is so intriguing to me. Not feeling tied down, just freer to create something more dynamic. And I'm just able to move on to something else, um, like another medium, if I get antsy, because I do get antsy <laughs> if I do one thing for too long. <clears throat> so just, I just love the feeling of being immersed and hands-on and pairing new things together. So my next thing is about perfectionism. This is more of a, I think this also goes with a concept um, that is a driving force for me. It's something that plagues us all at one point or another in our lives. So just uh, recognizing that even nature isn't always perfect. So letting myself make, make mistakes as an artist and learning to work with them, learning to adapt, um, loosening up and lightening standards that makes my art freer, not being so hard on myself when uh, something isn't as perfect or rendered as how I see it in my head. <clears throat> so accepting who I am now 
and over time that I'll change and grow as an artist and not having that tunnel vision. So the main artist that inspired me was actually one of my profs at Olivet, Bill Greiner. He is um, a watercolorist, so I took watercolor class with him, and he just really urged us to let go and have the art lead us because in watercolor, um, it's not a very forgiving medium. <laughs> so learning about the process and accepting outcomes with an attitude like, yeah, I can work with this. I can totally use this to my advantage and not let perfectionism kind of overcome us. So my art with this, um, I actually made an art piece surrounding this um, concept, kind of a critique on aesthetics itself. So kind of impressive technique versus being impacted by the meaning. So um, I rendered this um, plant pretty realistically. And if I just left it at that, which is pictured on the left, um, people might be really impressed with my technique or how beautiful it is. But instead, I decided to just slash my brush through it with just thick black paint to kind of show that that doesn't always matter, you know? Like, sometimes the meaning behind artwork is what it's meant to, you know, take away from it. So uh, I'm going to go through some techniques um, that I like to use. So first, painting styles. Achieving texture is super, super important to me when I'm painting. Just that visual and physical texture combined on my canvas. That combination of flat blending and just thick application. I love it. So um, with this style, I'm especially attracted to like fine art illustration. So something with the narrative, something that's bold. And then the elements and principles that I usually um, am kind of led to as I'm going along is layering to achieve depth movement, color, and contrast. So here's a couple of my artist inspirations. Vincent van Gogh, of course, that thickness, that bold color palette. It may be cliche because he's so popular and everybody talks about him, but it's a really, it's a really special combination that he's got going on. <laughs> so just that achievement of movement, texture, Having his body of work being so cohesive, like you can totally tell what's a Vincent van Gogh painting or not. <clears throat> and just, I gotta mention the Loving Vincent movie. If you've seen it, I'm sure you think it's beautiful. Like, oh my gosh, so, so mesmerizing and amazing. Uh, the next artist is a contemporary artist from Australia that I've discovered on Instagram. And she was a main inspiration for my, um, my book, my series of paintings called um, Swimming Through the Stars. I just really love her watercolor blooms, her analogous colors, just um, that imagery of the ocean kind of connecting to space with them both being vast, largely unexplored Spaces. <clears throat> and then um, Ad Adriana Varaho is an artist that I discovered this past year. Um, especially love her painting called Entrance Figure. Um, she's from Brazil. So a lot of her, um, uh, her historical influences from her country show up in her artwork. But I really focus for me on um, her use of line and pattern. Um, to me, this definitely shows a fine art illustration style. Um, just love her use of line. So here's some of my art. Here's that book I've been talking about. Um, I um, use a watercolor style and um, cut out my subjects, my um, all of my animals 
out from my watercolor paper and collage them on acrylic pores on canvases. And then I took pictures of them uh, before I collaged and then after I collaged um, to create the illustrations in this book. So yeah, that uh, combination of vast spaces of ocean and space, having um, that whimsical, imaginary feeling, um, and I mainly am kind of focusing on that flat versus dimensional feeling. So here's some of my other art that kind of shows my painting style, that flat versus thick application. Um, I love my, uh, my use of line and my gouache paintings like shown in the middle here. Um, and then that whimsical imaginary feel um, throughout kind of relating back to those Van Gogh paintings. So there are um, just a collection of my influences and inspiration and thank goodness that those things never end because we need them throughout our lives as artists. Just keep it coming. And here are my sources. Thank you so much, guys.